Hi, this is PM Dinner. Welcome to my monthly webinar. For today, I want to talk about messaging framework. Three things I will touch. Number one, what is messaging framework? Number two, why do you need it? Number three, what are the templates that you can use so you can get started? All right, let's dive in. Today, we are going to talk about the messaging framework, and there are three things I want to cover, really. And before I get started, I want to do a quick intro about myself. For Pam Dinner right here, yay, from Portland, Oregon. I'm a B2B marketer through and through, can you tell? <laughs> so in general, I help accelerate marketing's contribution to sales via content marketing, account-based marketing, or sales enablement. And I do that through trainings, keynote, and working with clients in the trenches and to set up the process and do whatever is necessary to get things done. And if you are interested in terms of some of the books I have written, Number one is global content marketing, which is how to scale content across regions. The next one is effective sales enablement, how you can support sales as a marketer. And I also wrote a book about artificial intelligence. It's really kind of like a high level introduction in terms of what artificial intelligence can be leveraged in the landscape of a B2B marketing. So if you are interested in any of these books, check it out. I also have a Facebook community so whoever is interested can join. It's really about building your marketing skills to get ahead. If you have any specific questions about digital marketing or specific discipline of digital marketing or how to build alignment between sales and marketing or how to even enhance your own marketing skills, come to the communities and ask me any questions. I answer all the questions myself. And the three things I want to talk about today. Is, number one, what is messaging framework? and why it's important. Number two, what are some of the benefits that you need to understand in case you need to create one, you need to explain to your internal teams why we are doing this together or collectively as a team. And number three is about some of the templates I want to share with you that you can do a DIY without my help. And those are the templates that have been used actually by me with my clients. So I want to share exactly what I use with my clients so you can get a sense of it. Let's get started. Number one, what is a messaging framework? It's really a very structural and a hierarchical way to represent your product's unique promises and differentiators. That is it. It's basically a very structural way to kind of look at your products and then in weave into the customer challenges and then you determine what you want to say about your products. That's really what messaging framework is. And why do we need it? In general, if you have a solid messaging framework, it would guide multiple different departments and also the uh, groups within the organization that they can basically move toward the same direction or communicate in a very consistent manner. Does that make sense? If you have a messaging framework, PR team can use that to write PR releases. The marketing team can use that as a baseline to write your blog, podcast, or even your video scripts. Salespeople can take that information, they know for the specific product what they need to highlight as the key differentiators or the key talking points. Customer can understand your differentiators and know how you are different from other companies that provide similar services, in general, your competitors. So the key benefits are consistency, uh, minimize confusion, and also a way to guide your editorial and the content planning. Most of the time, messaging framework tend to be overlooked or even underrated. That's because it's not sexy. And that's also because it's a lot of work. I'm gonna share the templates with you. You will understand why it's so much work and then not a lot of people make an effort to focus on that. But yet at the same time, this is a fundamental, literally the foundation of a house that you are going to build. If you don't have that, everybody can say whatever they want to say. So that's one, having a messaging framework. And this is tend to be more critical on the B2B side than on the B2C side. The B2C side, a lot of products tend to be transactional driven 
and a lot of product is less complicated. When you sell a piece of furniture or when you sell a piece of lamp, it's very easy to articulate the benefit of the lamps or the benefit of the sofa. The material that you are using, the length, how does that fit into a space, etc. It's easy to articulate that. Therefore, you may not need the messaging framework to define the products such as the one I'm pointing out, the lamps or the sofa. On the B2C side, your products tend to be a whole lot more complicated. If that's the case, you need to actually have some sort of framework or some sort of templates that guide people through in terms of what you want to communicate, what you want to say for your products and services. Does that make sense? So with that being said, there are three types of messaging framework templates I want to share with you. Three. I do share the ready to use messaging frameworks and the written samples. And I want to share that with you at the end of the webinar. So you know where to get them. So number one, it's all about products. Most of the time, especially in the B2B side, many companies, when they create messaging framework that tend to be product specific or product centric, that makes a lot of sense because after all, we are selling the products to make money, to increase our revenue. There's a direct correlation between the product you are selling and also the revenue that's going up. So having a certain way or unique way to talk about your product is critical. This is one template I want to share with you. You started with the name of your product on the top. The second column or the second row, if you will, is the target audience. Who is the target audience that you want to communicate or you want to market to? What is the specific value proposition for that specific product? With that value proposition, what kind of customer challenges that you want to address? And also the messaging positioning and the product features associated with each challenge. In general, I would say three. Identify three major customer challenges you encounter and how your products will address that. So you have messaging positioning, you have the product features, and then the next thing is, can you translate that product features to user benefits? The next row that I suggest is, what are some of the keywords associated with each product feature and the user benefits? Once you have this information or you have this created, all of a sudden, the team will understand that for this specific product will address these types of challenges for my customers. These are the couple features I can talk about, and these are the user benefit I can also use for the content creation. And adding the keywords will help the content creators to incorporate that keywords when they write content. Voila, this is a template that you can use or it's one type of messaging framework. So that's give you some specific examples. Given that this is more about DIY, you are using my template and you are doing this yourself, I'm gonna share with you in terms of how you should write this. And there are no right way or wrong way of writing it. I'm just giving you a some examples and get you thinking. Let's assume you have a specific product, it's a quality management suite. So you put that down. The target audience is a VP of quality. Many of my clients want to put five different target audiences right there. It was like, oh, you know what, for this, we want to make sure we talk to the CEO. We want to make sure we talk to the VP of quality. We also want to talk to a VP of IT. On top of it, we want to talk to another level of IT managers. In general, when I ask or recommend my client to do a messaging framework, you put one or two personas or target audience. That's it. Preferably just one. Because you are writing or you are talking about your product to a specific person. If you put the five different target audiences on that specific template, it's not really helpful. What are some of the key challenges you really want to tailor for that specific audience? They might not looking at your product in the same way. So in terms of number of target audience, I would say one or two. The value proposition is basically what is your product do? Can you write one statement about that? 
for this quality management suite is really about accelerate decision making with AI based and analysis and real time reporting anytime, anywhere. For this management suite, there are two things they really want to highlight. One is AI based. They have artificial intelligence embedded into it to actually help you to make a decision. They also can provide you reports anytime, anywhere across all devices. So that's one thing they want to focus on. With that, what are some of the challenges they are addressing to ensure the corporate quality standards are being followed? A lot of time there's a quality standard or quality compliance done at the factory level and that's set up by the government. So they want to make sure they are complying with that quality standard. I means the VP of the quality require a suite that's capable to serving the needs of our manufacturing site around the world. So that statement basically said this management suite is actually tailored for enterprise usage. You are target not just for any VP of quality, you target for the VP of quality of enterprises that have manufacturing sites around the world. That means the system needs to be consistent across all the manufacturing floor around the world to monitor the production process that can also store the process data for quality and also regulatory compliance audits. So that's the challenge. The challenge of the VP of quality is that I need a system. I need a system that I can use across all my sites that actually monitor the quality standard exactly the same way or have to comply with that country's specific quality standard. Does that make sense? So that is their challenge. Then the next things that you have to do is, okay, what is my positioning for that specific challenge? Basically, like I said, I targeted for enterprise. And so I write down one specific statement for that specific challenge, real-time decision-making enterprise visibility. Easy to remember right there. And what is the product feature that will support that? I have a specific product feature say MX350 advanced analytics. You know that. Your engineers know that, your salespeople know that, but I don't know that. Outside the company, inside the company, everybody was like, MX350, super sexy, great. But you cannot talk about MX350 to your customers. They don't get it. So you have to translate that to the user benefit. So MX350 advanced analytics provides visibility across all side and using AI to uncover hidden quality issues. But that just MX350. But what is the user benefit really, really is for MX350? Is using AI to continuously monitor the quality data and the report potential issues and then come up with potential recommendations. Do you see how I write the messaging templates in terms of the messaging from challenges, down to positioning, down to features, down to user benefits. They are interrelated. The keywords, what are some of the keywords associated with that? Operational efficiency, artificial intelligence, MX350, enterprise wide visibility, ISO 9001 quality certification, all those are keywords that can be used or you can use to create that's associated with that specific challenge. I'm sharing the templates with you. So you saw that in the previous slide, but you can add additional elements as you see fit. If you are writing a messaging framework specifically for campaigns, can you add that? Yes. If you are writing this specifically for product launch, can you add that? Yes. If you have a competitive landscape, you want to align with everybody before you even talk about customer challenges, can you add that? Yes. Can you also add another role in talking about references? Of course. There are a couple things you can add it. You can even say primary audience versus secondary audience. So if you look at this template I'm using right now, I'm modifying it for a client of mine that actually running massive campaigns worldwide. So we create a very specific messaging. We still start with the product, but we talk about industry dynamic. We talk about campaign objectives. Then we talk about the value proposition, customer challenges, and then et cetera. You have to think through in terms of what is your templates will look like 
what additional information you want to add to align with everybody. Messaging framework is an internal communication. It's not something you share externally. You are not gonna find any company sharing their messaging framework with anybody. It's usually treated as a confidential. All right, here, pick and choose different elements and make your own messaging framework. I spent so much time creating this slide, I have to run it again. <laughs> so that's template number one. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, template number two. Let's talk about thought leadership. So the first one is really about product. The second one is the template is about thought leadership. For this one, you will see it's a little bit different. Rather than start with a product, you start with objective. The objective of the communication. If you want to create a thought leadership story, what is the objective of that story? Who is the target audience? That's always there. For any marketing that you do, you're always to determine your target audience. The overall narrative is basically the overall stories you want to tell in that industry is a, a broad stroke of what that industry or that specific technology and then company specific narrative. If you understand that overall landscape, the broad stroke of that industry or specific technology, then you can narrow that down to a company specific narrative. And then you can still determine the value proposition, but this one is a company wide product portfolio. Again, the benefit is company why you have to look at very holistically is a company's product portfolio is a company's mission then the messaging positioning the impact if you actually write the messaging positioning what is that impact what is the impact of your product portfolio in terms of the industry or the uh, a technology landscape then you can determine what are the specific story you want to tell based on that specific messaging and what are the topics that you want to write and also the keywords that are associated with it. You can see right here, when you talk about thought leadership, the key takeaway for this specific slide is really about your narrative. What is your narrative? This is also in a way a template. I'm gonna read it through and you should listen, just listen and try to get a sense of it. It will resonate with you if you are in the B2B side and you are working on the thought leadership type of content. Objective, address a specific company's role and its differentiator in the future of technology or a specific industry. The target audience is VP of what? Quality, the VP of sales, doesn't matter. And the overall narrative, this is some of the sentences that you can use because you are writing the narrative. You have to look at the broad stroke, the overall industry, then you narrow it down to your company and also the products that you offer. The rise of the technology trend, cybersecurity, just call that, is revolutionizing certain product category of yours. That same technology is also ushering a specific segment in the air of what are some of the key trends you want to talk about. Do you see it? It's kind of like a template. To maintain the competitiveness, the companies, your customers, will need to leverage technology, cybersecurity, cloud-based, whatever, to be nimble, responsive, cost-effective. Those are some of the key terms that people tend to use and to consistently meet their customers' challenges or expectation. Then you move on a little bit narrower. One of the essential and critical components of this trend, whatever you decide to talk about in the context of your company's offering, is to reevaluate what are specific product categories from what to what. So that's kind of the starting point. So you're talking about the overall narrative. Then you move it down a little bit to a company specific narrative. As a solid solutions that you offer that have ability to do what to help your customer make certain kind of decisions. You want to talk about your company a little bit it's okay to be self-serving to some extent. Your company has been working on this product for a long, 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 long time to help the target audience to do what? This type of 
platform or management suite, whatever that is, is one of the key critical component for the trends and technology you want to talk about and how your company catalyze that transformation. Voila, that's your story. I'm not saying it's that simple. Even though I'm creating your templates, I give you something to share. It doesn't mean you can take this and copy exact and then your narrative is done. You really have to think through. In narrative, every single word counts. And right here is not bullet driven, bullet point driven. In the product specific type of messaging framework I'm sharing with you, it's more probably a couple sentences, bullet points. Here is paragraph. You have to write several paragraphs that's sensible, that makes sense. Once you move that on, you can talk about value proposition. The company paves the way to what? What kind of specific visions you want to share? The benefit tend to be in the five categories, cost, value, risk, performance, and efficiency. Can you articulate your company's broader portfolio, what the, companies that, the company effort that you are doing that either decrease the cost, increase the value, minimize risk, enhance performance, and also enhance the efficiency. Can you talk from these perspective? So for the quality, uh, the VP, the quality management suite, one thing that is very important to them is connectivity. Their system can connect all the devices, no matter what kind of devices that they have, they can connect it from the desktop, phone, to actually to the tablets, to even IoT. So connectivity is their biggest differentiator. Their product is always driving, connecting all the tools together. I work with them to think through in terms of what is the impact of that positioning. That means when you connect everywhere, you can access all level of data anywhere, anytime. Then you start talking about your messaging in narrative is this kind of ability to connect all the devices together will help the industry in the future doing what? Do you see how everything is connected in terms of writing a story? This is in a way kind of like an outline of your thought leadership narrative, but it's something to think about. It does take a lot of effort to actually write. Like I said, it's paragraph driven. Then the next thing you can do is you can look into what are some of the thought leadership topics that you want to write based on your self-discovery or the discussion with your internal team. Product category and the key trends or how certain product categories affect certain kind of management or industries, right? The future of something. You can see this kind of topic tend to be pretty common when you do a Google search. It's common for a reason because that's how people search. And again, some of the keywords related to that, it can be SEO driven. It can also relate it to your products or it can be something less than keyword driven because a lot of thought leadership content, the keyword they use tend to be forward thinking. If it's a forward thinking, it may not be 100% SEO centric. So you have to kind of balance that SEO keywords along with some of the future keywords that you want people to use. Is that helpful? So this is thought leadership. All right, template number three. We sell many, many, many products. Do I have to create messaging framework for every single one of them? <laughs> no, you don't. Is anybody watching The Good Place? <laughs> I love that show. Such a great job and I love that show. Okay, I sidetracked, I sidetracked. Let's come back to messaging framework. A lot of time when you have sell many, many products in the B2B side of things, that means you might have an e-commerce site. You have e-commerce sites and you have a different product people can buy or that people can choose. If you actually have e-commerce site, and you have many products, in a way, the revenue for all those products tend to be more transactional driven. If you actually have many products that you offer, the price tend to be a whole lot less and that you want people to actually kind of quickly read through about what the product is and then they can make a quick decision and to determine if they want to buy or not. With that being said, it tend to be a catalog or the e-commerce site if you have many, many, many products. And let's just look at Ikea. 
IKEA has many products, and many of you shop at IKEA to buy furniture. And they have a specific furniture, but if you look at that all the product specific information related to that specific piece of furniture, product description, product size, care instruction, environment and materials, package details, assembly and documentation review, and the product availability. In a way, in the e-commerce size, and you sell many, many products, it's probably a standardized template in terms of what kind of messaging and the key talking points you want to share as a part of that product. For example, the product description right here, the sofa is quickly, you know, quickly and easily into a spacious bed. So there's a couple copywriting. This is more related to copywriting, it's not necessary messaging. And you can place this chassis section somewhere else. So you give them specific instruction in terms of what this sofa is about and how this will be used. And then of course the product size, the length and the care instruction, etc. In general, in this kind of setting, e-commerce, when you're actually having products, it's not about messaging anymore. It's really about providing the information that the audience will need. You are not necessarily going to say, okay, what should I say about this product? If you are in that mindset, in general, it's a hero product you are selling and tend to be higher dollar value and the less value. For this, there got to be a template I already set up as a part of e-commerce uh, website updates. My recommendation is follow the existing process and updating the catalog as necessary. There's a template, like I said, depending on what is shown on your website. This in a way is a template that you can use, but it's not necessary messaging, it's more product information related. If you want to do the messaging framework on your own, my recommendation is select one template to use and modify it as you see fit. When I say select one template, I'm not talking about my template. When you do a Google search on messaging framework, you will see many, many templates out there. And I'm not saying use mine. Mine may not be the best for your industry and also for your product and services. So select one, but the most important thing is modify it. Don't use any templates, including mine, as it is. You have to give some thought in terms of the sequence of the different roles you did and how that will help you, a team, to understand what you are trying to do. So I want to make sure you understand that when you pick any templates, don't use as is and modify as you see fit. Based on this presentation, there's a blog post I wrote at the end of 2019. How to create a solid messaging framework, a guide for B2B marketers plus templates. If you want to download the templates I'm sharing with you today, you can go to that blog post and you can download that. Even if you don't remember how to create a solid messaging framework, a guide for B2B marketers, such a long title, but I wrote that title for SEO. You can always Google search messaging framework, comma, Pam Dinner and that blog post, I guarantee you, will come up. Then you can go all the way down and there are templates that you can download. It's a Word doc and you can download and use it right there as a template. And I have many templates, by the way. Whenever I work with the clients, especially on projects, I'm usually in the trenches with the client trying to get things done. Even though my role is a consultant, but it's really more or less kind of a marketing doer in the trenches and this, that set of a process that's talk to the customers, that's create the messaging framework or the content editorial, even set of account-based marketing process. So a lot of time what I do is actually working with my client to set the process to get things done. And I also do a lot of one-on-one -on -one mentoring and coaching. The senior managers or the VP of marketing or even marketing directors, a lot of time they would like to get themselves up to date in terms of a different marketing technology and also a different a disciplines of a digital marketing. And I usually do quite a bit of mentoring and coaching from that perspective as well. And I also do a lot of training. So if you are interested, reach out to me anytime. Another thing is I send out a monthly newsletter. If I don't have anything to say, I don't send out a newsletter. So in general, when I send out a newsletter, it tend to be know-how. What are the specific things that you can do to actually improve, say, the B2B marketing, content marketing, account-based marketing, or even sales enablement. So if you are interested, you can subscribe. Go to pamdinner.com all the way down to the end. <laughs> you can subscribe it, the newsletter.
Another thing I want to share with you, this is a reality. Even though I give you a template and I share a lot of examples of wordings that you can use, I want to make sure everybody understand that it is a lot of work to create messaging framework. And this is not something you can do it by yourself. If you are doing this internally and your products are complicated, you need to work with your product team, your sales team. Sometimes you even have to interview your customers. It's a living document, especially if you are in a SaaS based company that your company's product is constantly being updated and have a newer generation of products that's coming out on a regular basis, your messaging framework needs to be updated on a regular basis. And by the way, it is a lot of work. In general, when I work with the client to actually create a messaging framework, depending on when we can talk to a subject matter expert, when we can talk to a product team, when can we talk to our customers, the whole process can be two to four months. But that doesn't mean that for a smaller company, you can move things a whole lot faster. It doesn't have to be that long. But in general, in the big enterprises, it does take a bit of time to get this done. And the biggest payoff from my perspective is when you have something like that is, like I said, the consistency. You are able to drive a consistency in terms of the communication outreach with your PR team, with your marketing team, with your sales team. Another thing is the biggest payoff is having the messaging framework is the subject matter experts and also the content creators can take the information and the right editorial content, incorporate the relevant keywords that you envision and you have in mind. Again, it's a sense of consistency. Of course, you have to write it from the perspective, not self-serving, not talking about me, 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 me. It's really talking about the customer's challenges and customer's perspective, how your product will help them. All right, another thing is I want to share with you, I hope I didn't overwhelm you based on my experience talking to individual marketers who actually come to me and asking me for templates and do it themselves. It seems like it's actually doable that you can do it on your own. And some of them actually reach out to me and have me helping them through a specific project that also is feasible and doable as well. But like I said, I'm sharing enough information with you that you can actually get this started, which is a very good starting point. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the webinar and you find the information useful and relevant. If you do, please comment and give me a like. That would be greatly appreciated. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel. I publish content on a regular basis for B2B marketers. I'm sure you will find them useful. Take care. Bye-bye.